who would have thought in the middle of the Tanami that you'd get a red traffic light? Uh, just done uh, around 70 kilometres of a detour around roadworks. <coughs> I just swallowed a fly. <laughs> Good evening. I think I'm at Flat Out Creek rest area, or behind it, should I say. Uh, there were roadworks and a detour, so possibly the signs have been taken down, but according to the map, it was about here. I hope I'm in the right place. Anyway, this is where I am for the night. I was hoping to get a good sunset with some clouds, but the uh, clouds are gone, and yeah, this is where I'm at. So what are today's lessons? Probably more than one. Okay, I was going to check the road conditions before I left this morning, but I checked them a couple of days ago and there's been no rain. So I thought, oh yeah, no worries, all good. You know, I'll just get on the road that bit earlier and, and head off. <sighs> so it happened that um, there was unfortunately a, a severe accident yesterday afternoon and the road was closed for about 24 hours. And the guy said, oh, I'll be about an hour. Anyway, about three hours later, I was back on the road. It's a bit of a hold up. These, uh, apparently there's an accident down there at 3 a.m. It's now after lunch the next day and the road's still closed. Well, due to this road accident, I'm kind of stuck here, so I'm going to make myself some lunch. The guy did say an hour, but, you know, that was well over an hour ago and there's people up further. He said an hour, like three hours ago, so <laughs> I don't know how long I'm going to be here, so I've got to make myself some lunch and then See how far I get today. See what happens. So it's after lunch. I've been here for I don't know two and a half hours so far. I guess you know I did check the road was open, which it did. Well, <laughs> it was to this point. They're letting cars through, just not trucks and vans and that because it's um, there's a little bit of a detour, but apparently it's well and truly overgrown with trees and some very tight corners and so on to get around. So. Yeah, we're just stuck here with the um, rest of everyone else until they say to go. Hopefully it won't be too much longer, but I guess I'm not in a hurry to go anywhere. But yeah, nice to get a few kilometres under the belt. I guess it always pays to go with plan A and check the road conditions first. So, yep, that's the first lesson. Yeah, on the Tanami track, or Tanami Road as it's called now, you've got to be aware that there's a section of... 597 kilometers without fuel. I'm all good, I've got a long range tank and a jerry can with diesel from Adelaide on the back of the caravan, so I'll use that. Now I did stop on the way and just um, topped up at, you know, $2.80 a litre, yeah, about 30 litres, uh, just to top it up as well. So I well and truly, you know, get through without a problem. Speaking to a couple of people, including a truck driver, he said, don't go into the certain uh, community to fill up with fuel because you might get your car pelted with stones and everything like that. Anyway, heard a couple of bad stories about it, so I thought I'll avoid that. Just after I pulled over at a stop and spoke to a, um, another caravaner, and they pulled in there for fuel and said, not a problem, they were friendly as. Take everything with a grain of salt, I guess, and make your own decisions. I guess being stuck in a roadblock for three hours had some benefits. It meant all of the road trains, uh, one of them was sitting there for almost 24 hours. It meant when I, we finally got going that yeah, we got, we got th past all the road trains pretty much and we're in a convoy, so any oncoming traffic pulled over. 
uh, to let us through. So that was a, a bonus, I guess. Uh, I can see that other people have had campfires here, whether it was workers or probably other campers. So I'm not the only one to stop here. So I feel safe here and shouldn't be too much road noise. And that was the only, uh, I guess the other thing with having a three hour stop was it meant I got here quite late. So it's, um, the sun has set and it's starting to get a bit dark-ish. So yeah, I better finish setting up and get something to eat. Good morning from a windy Tanami. Hopefully you'll be able to hear me okay. It's not a bad spot here. There's only room for a couple or so caravans, I guess. So this morning I've um, emptied my jerry can into the tank and used some of the water into my bladders just to take a bit of weight off the rear of the caravan. Had a shower, let down my tyres, got to put Dishy away over there. Just about ready to hit the road. Really, we'll, I'll be getting into the dirt road for the next, I don't know, 700 kilometres or whatever, so... And um, spoke to that guy this morning and he gave me a couple of tips on places to go prospecting, so yeah, I might stop along the way. Who would agree that the only good thing to have on crumpets is honey? Because I'm getting close to the Western Australian border, can't take honey in. I don't have any, so I've gone with plum jam. Just kind of doesn't cut it, but not bad. Not as good as honey. Excuse me, talking with my mouth full. So this morning I kept thinking I've forgotten something when I was packing up. And yeah, I get out on the road and look in the rear view mirror and noticed I'd left the shower window open. So no damage done, I'll go and close that and be on my way. If you think you've forgotten something, you probably have. At the moment I'm on a detour around Roadworks. They're repairing the road over there after floods last year. Big job. Yesterday I think I travelled on some of the worst roads I've been on, country roads, um, and then some of the best. Like they've uh, just resealed and remade the road and uh, it was smooth as. Didn't expect that in the town of my, but a few termites here, termite hills here as well. Check it out. There's certainly a lot of work going on here. Not the sort of equipment you'd expect to find on a road work site. To get a bit of dust here, but probably wasn't a bad place to meet this guy. This is Renahan's Boar rest area. You can camp here overnight. There's, uh, as you can see, a shelter, picnic table. There's a water tank over there which is empty, and bins over behind my caravan there. Maybe I have a look, a little look up on the, the roof here. Yeah, can someone tell me what these nests are? Well, there's plenty of them. Are they swallows or something? So I've just done about 70 kilometers of detour around Roadworks. So what's the longest detour you guys have had? Leave a comment below and let us know. Yeah, I've just pulled over because my tire pressure monitoring system just started beeping at me. So let's go and have a look. Saying this one, yeah, can hear the air coming out here. Look, there it is. Okay. I don't know why. I was just thinking a little while ago. I hope I don't get a flat tire out here in the middle of nowhere because yeah, I'm only carrying one spare with me. I've not used one of these before, so I may read the instructions first. ARB puncture repair kit. So I'm flogging it have to take the tire off and then possibly use a spare. But um, I'll get the jack out and from uh, in behind here. 
and the tools. I think I might be stuck here for a little while. And I've got the spare tire off, so that's a start. And I have to let some air out of that one as well. So I pumped the tire up again, just so I didn't have to jack it up so much. It's a bit of a challenge with this car getting the jack under there, but uh, I knew I wore my old t-shirt today for a reason. So I'll let that go down a bit and then take the tire off and set the new one at um, 30 psi or 33 psi and hopefully that'll be good to do the rest of the Tanami. And I'll just see if I can see what's inside that tire once it's off. There's something in there I can't get out with the pliers. So. Just going to um, let some air out of this tire. That's the um, ARB tire deflator. So I'll just um, put this down to about 33 psi. the valve back in. Now that I know how to use this after done a couple it's a bit easier. It's done for the moment. I'll let it down and tighten them up. A cloud of dust. Okay. If someone can give me some tips on traveling solo and getting footage of this sort of stuff, let me know. I'm feeling it should be easy with two people. Okay, one. Yeah, let's try and thread it through there. Well, maybe this is where pliers might help. Or squashing it a bit. Yeah, that's about halfway. I'm glad it's not 40 degrees when I'm doing this. Yeah. it be this hard to pull it, push in? That's a question. <sighs> Got it. Yay. <laughs> mm. There we go. My first tire plug. <laughs> Okay, hopefully that will work. Let's see if it's knife and uh, cut the excess off. Yippee, there we go. I'll inflate it again to 40, 45 psi and put this on as a spare on the back for now and I'll be able to monitor it and see if it stays up. <laughs> Think about whether I'm going to reverse up here a bit and stay the night or try and go you know down the road a bit further and look for a camp for the night. <sighs> Time to put this tire back on the spare and clean up. Lost a lot of time here. This is what it is. I've got the uh, tire back on there and I'm thinking the sun's getting low in the sky that I might go down there turn around and head on down this track. I've had a little walk down there and it doesn't seem to be used. A few people have sort of gone there and it's a bit overgrown and turned around and come back. There's a little spot on the side. I reckon I can get the caravan and car in there without damage. Um, yeah, I sound confident. <laughs> it's only fairly low growth, so I'll be able to drive over it, I think, and camp in there the night. So either that or I keep driving up the road and 
um, it could be you know 80, 90, 100 kilometers before I find another stop. So that's looking a bit better. Everything put away almost. While I got the bonnet up, I just did an inspection of the air cleaner. Actually, looks pretty good. A few dead bugs in there. I noticed this uh, clamp was a bit loose, so I've tightened that up. Battery's got a bit of a bulge in it, but um, yeah, they reckon that's okay. So anyway, everything else looks okay. I'm no mechanic, but um, just uh, looking around for anything that's loose or looks out of place or don't see any oil leaks or anything like that. So. So far, so good. Okay, bonnet down, let's move. I always like to take a photo of where I've stopped for the night, but it's uh, kind of off track, we'll say. There is a track over there, but um, not a recognized camping spot. I'm sure there'll be no one else turning up here tonight, and uh, maybe just me and the wildlife. Yeah, so what happened today? The tyre pressure monitoring system did its job and worked. The alarm went off when it went down to about 25 psi and I pulled over and was able to park the car in, in a safe spot and change the tyre. So I think it's a, a must for everyone who's travelling, especially in the outback, uh, with a caravan as well, because if you've got a, a dual axle caravan, the tyre goes, you probably not going to know about it for quite a while and you could just definitely destroy a tire in that time and basically your system will pay for itself if you save a couple of tires even one tire really first time I've actually changed a tire on that car and yeah it took a little bit longer I guess than it should have first time I've plugged a tire as well and it worked so yeah definitely had to take it off to do and then I've left the spare on there the spare's never been used so first time so it's got plenty of tread at least on one tire and I guess it shows yeah you know, I'm no mechanic but you don't need to be a mechanic to be able to travel in the outback and make things happen and if you got to do it you got to do it I guess and I'm happy the the plug worked and so far it's yeah it seems to be holding so that's the main thing I've got no idea really I've got all the gear and no idea as you might say uh, but I'm learning along the way yeah in my later years and um, yeah you can do it too. I've only done 157 k's today, yesterday I did 397. Yeah, I'm not in a hurry to get anywhere and I'm in a um, spot where I don't think um, many people have camped before probably but yeah not recently anyway. It's all good, another day tomorrow I'll do a few more k's and a few more flies. So as you can see, I've set Dishy up behind me. The sun's gone down, there's a bit of colour in the sky. And um, yeah, looked on the map to see where I am and uh, how much town am I? And would you believe a couple of hundred metres down the road is a rest area. I could have pulled in there, changed my tyre and yeah, stayed the night. Yeah, so close, so close. Sun's gone down, the flies seem to have disappeared. And tonight I've got how good are these cookers, our camp master cooker out, and I'm gonna just cook all those sausages. I swear I'm not gonna eat them all tonight. So yep, they're on. Inside I'll cook up some uh, veggies, potatoes, carrots, and mixed veggies or peas, something like that, and uh, be ready for dinner in about half an hour. Here we go. I might have just slipped a little bit with the peas, but I'll get eaten. That's my dinner for tonight and tomorrow night. Two nights I don't have to cook, so for me that's worth it. I reckon the locals will be feeling the cold this morning. It is fresh. But uh, check out these cloud formations. Pretty cool. So yesterday I had plum jam on a crumpet and I said, doesn't really cut it. Today I'm going to try some salted caramel all the way from Bali. So let's see how this goes. Different. Better than the plum jam, but still not as good as honey. Gotta have honey on crumpets. Not bad. 
different. So where do you guys put your broom when you're traveling? This might not suit everyone, but I just pop mine up through here, tighten her up, a bit hard to do it with one hand, but yeah, it doesn't go anywhere. So it's out of the way. And as you can see, I sweep the floor all the time. So it gets a lot of use. I thought while I'm here, I might as well get out the metal detector and give it a go. Since I'm only about um, 11 kilometers away from the second largest gold mine in Australia. I thought I'll just uh, have a little look around here and try my luck. Heading towards Rabbit Flats now, so see you there. Cheers.